Hello, good evening. Hey, I'm Kathy, Kathy Simmons, and um, this is my son, Daniel. And um, my husband, Dave, and I, and our sons, Sam and Daniel, we have been members at Trinity for over 15 years. Both of our children were at the Child Development Center from babies through VPK. We've been blessed by God and by our Trinity family in so many ways. We're here today to share something special with you, a new ministry that we feel that God has placed upon our hearts. The last couple of years have been really something with COVID, violence, riots, fear, economic issues, isolation, and people divided against one another based on politics, race relations, vaccines, you name it. Seems that there's this tension in the air where we can be tempted to feel the anxiousness of the world rather than God's peace. We as Christians know that God's got us. We're under his protection and he has prepared a place for us a whole lot better than this one. He commands us to be still and to know him. So what about people who don't know him? The shape of this sanctuary is a cross. And I've always loved that about this church. And I may not be familiar to some of you because we always go to the Sunday morning service. We usually don't go to the Saturday evening service. The vertical axis of the cross represents our relationship with Jesus. The horizontal axis of the cross represents our relationship with those, ar those around us. Without both, we just have a line and we don't have a cross. We are commanded to share Jesus far and wide so that all may be saved and have his peace here on earth and eternal life beyond this earth. So how do we share Christ when Christianity is being pushed out of schools, workplaces, social media, etc.? The devil's really working hard these days, and we know how this ends and Jesus wins. So let's rally and be strong together as a body of Christ. We don't need to cower alone when we have one another and we have God on our side. We need to rejoice. The cross is a unifying Christian symbol on churches, jewelry, clothing, tattoos, Bibles, etc. We see the occasional Jesus fish on a car or a yard sign advertising a specific church. But even as we worship in our own denominations, we're all Christians and yet we're just divided in a sense. What happens if we look around us and see one God everywhere, and see one Jesus in every one. Wouldn't that be awesome? Can we make it cool and loud and proud to be Christians? We've decided to start a movement where Christians can get excited about sharing their faith. We created a logo that we feel captures oneness in Christ and directs people to the logo that we create, to the website, excuse me, that we created, which is the number one, not the word, one undergod.com. The website is only scripture from the Bible. There's no ads, no politics, no sermons, podcasts, not one person's opinion versus another, just the word of God standing on its own with a message inspiring people to come to him and to come together. So I encourage you to check out the screenshots from the website that are scrolling up here, or better yet, you can pull out your phones right now if you would like to and open up your web browser and type in www.1, the number, undergod.com and check it out. If you feel led to do so, we'd be grateful if you'd share the website link as a social media post on Facebook, Parler, Gab, MeWe, Instagram, or whatever your social media of choice is. The website is designed as a launch pad for people to get exposed to the word of God and to get inspired to pray, read the Bible, join a church, and fellowship with others. The logo directs people to the website, but it also is a visual to give people joy when they look around and they see so many people identifying as Christians, it's a conversation starter when one enthusiastic Christian sees another and feels safe opening up and having that conversation. On oneundergod.com, we will make available made in USA products only. Um, we want to first do no harm, so we don't want to be consuming products that are potentially made in unethical ways or using slave labor or something that would not be desirable. So we're um, only purchasing the made, made in USA and the Made in USA products are very costly as I found out and they're not hard, to, they're not easy to come by. But they'll be for sale at very affordable prices which will enable us to reach more people. Um, we've been hand, just handing these um, stickers out that we have so far. Um, we're starting with bumper stickers only and then we'll add later as funding allows magnets, yard signs, hats, shirts, etc. We've only our personal savings to begin, which took a big hit 
from COVID this past year. So we would love it on your way out of worship today if you'd please pick up a bumper sticker to take with you. If you'd like to do so, we'd be honored if you'd place it on your car or window or laptop or the side of your garbage can, which is popular in my neighborhood to put stickers on the side of your garbage cans, wherever you feel comfortable displaying it to share Jesus. Be wonderful if you'd also visit the website and share it on your social media via your email contacts, etc., and maybe even post pictures of your sticker on display along with the website. If you can use more stickers and feel comfortable handing them out to your friends and family, neighbors at work, etc., please take more than one. There'll be a pile of them. We just ask that they not be set aside or thrown away as we only have so many to begin. Uh, we'll be available after the service to answer any questions. We also welcome your suggestions, and if you'd like to make a donation so that we may purchase more stickers, that would be awesome, but it's not required. Uh, we'll have a basket back there next to the stickers for any voluntary donations, and those will be used just to purchase more things to give away. Um, thank you for your time and attention today, and we love you, and we pray that God richly blesses you and your families. Well, thank you, Catherine and Daniel. And I'd just like to take a quick second here. <clears throat> My understanding is this is a website that you want to get people's attention to go to and to be fed on God's Word. Mm -hmm. Encourage them to go to pray. Encourage them, no matter what church or no church that they go to, simply to get engaged in the Word of God and with other Christians and to pray and to read the Bible. Yes. And <clears throat> that's the sole purpose of it. And the bumper stickers are yours for what? For nothing. For free. For free, yeah. Lutherans love that word. And then the other thing I wanted to say is that any of the proceeds, I know we've talked, but if you do want a, a, a hat that says, speaks about one under God, those are gonna be available for you in the future or the magnets will be available, but the monies are rolled back into getting this out so that we can get more people reading the word of God. And the best thing they can do tonight once they get that is besides putting it on their car or on their pajamas, no, don't do that. Where, where, what would be the best thing they could do? Send their what? Their to friends? share it on social media or um, on the bags. There's, um, there's a sticker on the bag. It has a, a, an insert in it. It has a sticker and then there's a sticker on the back that shows you how to follow us on Facebook, Facebook Instagram, and those different sites. Um, and then we post Bible verses every day um, so that when people like us, we have almost 100 likes on the Facebook page already. And um, we just started this within the last week. And then every day I've been posting uh, English Standard Version Bible verse each day. And so all these people who are liking it because they saw a sticker or whatever, they're getting a Bible verse every day. And it just, selfishly, it makes me feel good because I don't know about you guys, but the last year, year and a half, it's like you can't even turn on the news or anything. And you're just like this, like, oh no, oh my gosh, what happened now? Oh my goodness. You know, and it's just like this crushing feeling all the time, you know, and um, God doesn't tell us to do that. He tells us to be still and to rejoice and to trust him and to be excited. And this has really given me something to be excited about. I actually woke up from a dream in February and I woke up with this on my heart and it kept nagging at me and nagging at me. And it's just taken me this long to just kind of put it together. So, and more than anything, pray, if you would please, just pray. Thank you know, you. pray that people can be um, excited and not worried. And the thing that amazed me is that Daniel has <clears throat> all these Bible verses memorized that you've got up on the screen, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Captain. Okay, I'd like to welcome everyone to uh, Trinity's Saturday evening worship service and welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us from home. Uh, we've made a very slight change uh, in our uh, mask policy uh, due to the increase in COVID-19 rates here in Orange County. And basically what we are doing now is we are encouraging social distancing wherever you can. And if you can't social distance, then we encourage you to wear a mask. For those who prefer to mask and distance, we do have the east and west transepts of the church uh, where uh, you can go ahead and sit. And at this point, we are not anticipating any further changes, though 
you know, depending on the situation, I guess there's a very slight possibility. Uh, we are still going to be doing the uh, uh, communion either in the pew, and when, before communion, Pastor will ask if anybody wants to do communion in the pew and at the rail. And we will be, uh, the ushers will come through with a plate uh, for the offering. Okay, as we move forward in uh, our ministry, we'll be moving to two worship services each Sunday starting September 12th. This was voted on uh, prior to the COVID pandemic and we're now finally able to implement it. The Sunday School Bible Study Hour will be between the contemporary service and the traditional service. The contemporary worship will meet from nine to 10 Sunday school and Bible study will be from 10.15 to 11, and traditional worship will be 11.15 to 12.15. Middle school youth will also begin on September 12th, and we are going to be uh, examining Paul and uh, his uh, journeys through the Mediterranean. Uh, and we'll be using Right Now Media uh, to do that. Okay. With the second Sunday worship service and the start of uh, two services every Sunday, we are facing a shortage of volunteers. So we ask anyone who is able to assist during worship, either as a greeter, uh, a reader, a uh, PowerPoint, or an usher, to uh, uh, contact the designated volunteer schedule for that area, if you know who that person is, or just reach out to Chanda at TLC at trinitydowntown.com and she'll point you in the right direction. Uh, we're also excited to share that we're continuing to work on Connections for Trinity's Zipline Initiative. We have volunteers who are contacting people in their own zip codes to share information and get people with similar interests connected. We encourage everyone to, correct, to create a line of connection to a smaller group of your Trinity family within your home zip code. You can learn more in the Trinity Weekly and on Trinity's website, and if you'd like to help coordinate within your home zip code, just contact our Ministry and Communications Coordinator, Chanda, and she will get you started. And again, if you are not getting our uh, Trinity Weekly email or you're not getting the phone tree, which are two ways that you can keep up to date on what's going on at Trinity. Please contact Chanda at TLC at trinitydowntown.com. Give her your contact information, either email or phone number, and we'll make sure that you start to get that information. And that's it for this evening, Pastor. Sing. 
If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father, most merciful God. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his own mercy and grace, has given his own Son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the Word, and by the authority of Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. as we prepare for our worship today. In a world that needs mercy, we sing together, Lord have mercy. Listen. Lord have mercy. We sing together. Lord, have mercy. And we keep singing. Lord, have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the unity of all. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who worship here. Lord, have mercy. Bless the Lord with me. Come, Come on, on and bless, bless the Lord. Lord. Come on and bless the Lord with me. 
Blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. Come on and bless the Lord with me. 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 For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia, alleluia. Come, Come on and bless the Lord with me. That's why we're here. Come, Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. And the Lord be with you. Let us pray together. You gave your Son, Jesus, as the heavenly bread of life. Grant us faith to feast on him in your word and sacraments, that we may be nourished unto life everlasting. Through the same Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Tonight's Old Testament reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, beginning with the second verse. The whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them, whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling that you grumble against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness. And behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Tonight's epistle is from Ephesians chapter 4, beginning with the first verse. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he has also descended into the lower parts of the earth? 
He who descended is the one who also ascended far above the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for the building of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. appointed for this evening is taken from the Gospel of St. John, the sixth chapter. On the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with the, his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus answered them, Truly I tell you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your full, your fill of the loaves. Do not labor for the food that perishes, but rather for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. They said to him, What must we be doing to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of the God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to them, Then what sign do you do for us that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. Sorry. Stay tuned. You ate your fill of the loaves, but don't labor for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God that you believe on him whom he sent. So they said to Jesus, Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the man in the wilderness, as it's written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father, the true bread from heaven. For the Father, the bread of God, is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Here ends the reading of the Holy Gospel. Praise you, Please join us in our sermon hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace be richly and abundantly poured out upon you this day. Today's been a very long day, but it's a day where we see another one of our fellow saints, our brothers and sisters in Christ, who have crossed the finish line of faith. You'll notice a lot of flowers here tonight, and those are from a memorial service for one Bonnie Hahn. And we thank God for his grace and mercy extended to her and her family and to the family of faith here at Trinity. We've seen a lot of prayers answered and we've seen a lot of things going on. But it's with true joy when we see the saints go marching home. Tonight, we look at the gospel lesson, Jesus answered them, truly I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate the fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but rather for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For to him, God the Father has set his seal. I look at this text and I, I kind of want to say if I was thinking about this being on TV, it would probably have the banner, and wait, there's more. What you see is that the people that came and were fed by Jesus and the disciples, the feeding of the 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fish, and the disciples kept feeding them and feeding them, and there was more and more food. And in fact, we are told that the disciples picked up how many baskets full? Twelve. Twelve baskets full. And that's a lot. But it shows that God provided more than enough. And I think he's really telling the people that were following him, wait, there's more. There's something better. I want to, you to receive a food that endures to eternal life. And it reminds me, it's so often, that we ask God for so little when he really wants to give us so much. Has God ever given you more than you asked for? I see a few of you shaking your head, yeah. We settle. There's a story of a beggar who was given audience with the king, and the king asked the man, what can I do for you? And the man replied, I only need a little food to nourish my body for this night. And the king spoke to his attendant, and they brought in a feast, a meal that was fit for a king. In fact, it was the king's meal. And then the attendant started to put before this beggar several documents and several valuable pieces of fine china and other items. And the beggar was astonished and said, I only wanted a meal, a small portion of food, and you've given me this feast, and now all of this. And the king smiled and said to the beggar, you asked out of your poverty as a beggar, but I as a king have given to you out of the abundance of my wealth and the riches of my kingdom. Luther calls us beggars before the throne of God. Beggars seeking the mercy and the grace of God, the kindness of God to hear and to answer our prayers, to be with us in our world. And I remind you, sometimes we ask God so little when God really wants to give us so much, so much more. There's a verse in Scripture that reminds us and tells us that God is able to give us more than we ask, think, or imagine. That we can't even outthink God for what we might want. But God out of his kindness and his grace, gives us. Isn't that where we're at sometimes like this beggar? Like the people of our text today also, 
the people who followed Jesus just wanting another meal or perhaps another miracle or to hear one more message from Jesus. But what Jesus wanted to give them was eternal life, never-ending food, riches beyond compare, a relationship with him, a place of heaven called home. You know, we sometimes cozy up to Christ only to confess a sin that's bothering us and asking God simply, forgive us and help us get over it. Get past it, you know. Feel better about ourselves. Sometimes we ask God to just please hear and answer our prayers to at least tip the scale in my favor if I'm applying for a new job or if I'm uh, going to school and I need a little extra help on a test I didn't study for. God, help me. We ask for so little when God wants to give us so much. We speak as people who want social security, but God gives us eternal security. We want a good life here, but God gives us eternal life and abundant life both here and now as well as then and there. We want a meaningful job, but what God wants to employ you and me in doing something that's going to help bring people across the threshold of faith into the heavenly family to be able to spend eternity with you in Christ's presence. God wants to employ you in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ so that others can come to faith and believe. The crowds wanted to see this Jesus, to hear another message, and Jesus gives us a direct line to the throne of God. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, God promises to hear and answer every one of our prayers. He does that, of course, according to his word, in his timing and in his way. But isn't that amazing that we can talk to God at any time and any place? Then they said to him, what must we do to be doing the works of God? And Jesus answered them, the work of God is that you believe in him whom he has sent. And so they said to him, then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work will you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness as it's written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, it wasn't Moses that fed you the bread from heaven. It was my Father who gave you the bread from heaven. And the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. You see, a lot of people try to please God to butter him up, to do things that will, they think, be pleasing to him. And that's good, that's fine, but it's not how we get to heaven. A lot of people try to gain their way to God through the work they do. So it is with this crowd. Jesus plainly tells them, the work of God is that you believe in the one whom he has sent. Jesus, the bread of life. It was the work that Christ would do upon Calvary's cross that he would accomplish through the shedding of his blood to be on our part his work to redeem us. It seems so simple. It's like going to a restaurant with God and demanding then that we somehow pick up the tab or simply pay for the tip. We think we have to do something, but not so with God. Our part is simple. Believe. Believe in Jesus, the one whom God the Father has sent. These folks that came to Jesus looking for another miracle, another message, another loaf of bread, they based their faith and their religion on a human response rather than a divine intervention. They were looking for an earthly king who would reign in Jerusalem, but not Jesus, God's son. He would reign on the father, throne of his father, David. And he ruled not just over Jerusalem, but over the entire world. He was to be the king of kings and lord of lords. The savior promised from long ago, who had all power and all authority, and through his suffering and his death and his resurrection, 
He was able to grant you and me victory, victory over death itself, over damnation and over the grave. Amidst death, Jesus grants life. Amidst our struggles with sin because of Christ, he offers forgiveness and freedom and salvation. That's how Jesus feeds us. That's what he gives us. Such a bread of life. I love the crowd as they turn and look to Moses in the Old Testament, how God had given them bread from heaven, now asking Jesus to give them a sign. And Jesus says, what about what you just ate? What about the feeding of the 5,000, in other words? with only five loaves and two fish. Did you not see the sign that God gave you there in that wilderness to you, the children of Israel, just like God did with Moses? God wants you to believe, he told the crowds. He wants you to believe in me, Jesus, the Christ, the one whom he has sent. That's the one who God wants you to believe in, too. He wants you to believe and trust and hold tight to what Christ has accomplished for you in his work of saving your soul. He is indeed the bread of life. And they asked him, sir, would you give us this bread always? Remember how I started with saying, we ask so little, and yet God wants to give us so much. Is not the kingdom of heaven truly upon them and upon us right now? They are so close to seeing who this Jesus is and why he came, and some of you may be there too, thinking, is this Jesus the real Messiah? Is he the promised one? Is he the one that can save me, forgive me, and give me life even when I die? Jesus is that one. He is the bread of life. And he says, whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. Some people will not believe that Jesus is that Christ. They will deny the message that is being sent to them. They will not partake of that heavenly banquet. And he calls them out for their unbelief, and yet seeing them, he tells them, you have tasted, but you have not been fed. And then he tells them, you've seen, but not seen. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. He will never kick you to the curb. He will never look at you and say you're not worthy. He will never say to you, because his blood was shed for you. And that's his covenant with God the Father, that through the shedding of his blood, the entire sins of the world were forgiven. And you and I receive that promise when we believe and trust that this Jesus is the Savior, the bread of life. Soon we're gonna be taking Holy Communion, and this evening we'll partake of that bread of life Jesus Christ himself, we believe, suffered and died to pay for all of our sins. And we believe as Christians who are Lutheran also that God is here with us in, with, and under that bread and wine. And as we start to see that, as we receive, you hear the words of Jesus, take and eat, this is given for you. Take and drink, this is shed for you for the remission of, my, of your sins. Take and drink the blood of Christ, eat of the body of Christ, your sins will be forgiven. Those are the words of Jesus, repeated by me to simply assure you that God's at work there. God is at work to forgive you, to sustain you, to feed you, and to give you so much more, so much more than you could have asked or imagine, because you remember, like Luther said, we are but beggars before the Lord, 
but we have come before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, who's promised us life everlasting in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep you in the true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please join me in the uh, confessing, confession of our faith this Sunday, Saturday, in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, this time we will take up our offerings and receive our gifts you may be seated um, our prayers will be now said as well I've never asked these questions I've never felt so broken, oh God, what do I do now? I've never cried this way, I've never seen such pain, oh God, what do I do now? All my fears came true, but they're no match for you. Oh God, come and hold me now. And be my prince of peace, share my suffering. Oh God, come and hold me now. I lift my eyes to heaven and remember I am loved. I lift these weary hands and let my father pick me up more than answers more than healing god your presence is enough i lift my eyes to heaven and remember you're still where my help comes from if you are near to the broken heart and then you are here with me you take my sorrow inside your hands and you turn it to victory if you are near to the brokenhearted then you are here with me you take my sorrow inside your hands and you turn it to victory i never ask these questions i've never felt so broken oh god what do i do now i lift my eyes to heaven and remember i am loved i lift these weary hands and let my father pick me up more than answers more than healing god your presence is enough i lift my eyes to heaven and remember you're still where my help comes from you're still where my help comes from you're still where my help comes from
be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Merciful Father in heaven, we lift up the following people for your care. For Naomi, healing from pneumonia, currently hospitalized at COVID-related illness. For my cousin Rocky, grant that these issues that are currently plaguing him can be fully identified and subsequently eliminated, that may, he may be returned to full health. For June, uh, grant June a successful surgery on Monday remove the pain this affliction has caused her and allow a complete and, and rapid recovery. For Kurt, who is currently suffering with cancer, and for Keith, we ask for a good report on recent cancer testing that it may uh, not be present in his body. Lord, on these your servants who are in need of your healing hand, lead the physicians in each case and touch them so they will know that you are with them and through your holy will they will make a complete recovery. Grant each individual and their families uh, the knowledge and peace that, and comfort that you are with them uh, through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we also pray for Wallace, and we ask you to bless and be with him in these days. Also that you would be with David Wilkos's father, that you'd comfort him perhaps in these difficult days that may be his final days as well. We place into your hands also the Hahn family and ask your holy comforter to be present with them and to give the peace that surpasses all human understanding. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we place them. Lord, in your mercy. And now we pray that prayer which you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And forgive us as though you trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord and Savior Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had broken it, he gave it unto his disciples and he said, Take and eat. This is my body given unto death for you, for the remission of all your sins. Likewise, in the same manner, he also took the cup, and when he had supped, he gave thanks, and he gave it unto his disciples, saying, Take and drink ye all of it, for this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is given and is shed for you for the remission of all your sins. As often as you drink this, do it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you. 
always. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may it strengthen you as you receive it and preserve in you, in both in body and soul, and even unto life everlasting. Depart with his peace. Amen. You may be seated. Son. 
praise for his great love, my witch we O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. and serve the Lord with joy.